Okay, the third video here, we talk about pregnancy, parturition, and lactation. So remember the first video we reviewed the actions of follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, they are gonadotrophin from the pituitary gland, also controlled by GnRH. And then uh, this would go down to the uh, ovaries or the estrogen to produce and control ovulation. And then after ovulation, the corpus luteum would be uh, forming and then regressed. And then the eggs uh, could be fertilized. And then this hormone would come out and uh, progesterone. And this hormone come out with high level to prepare after fertilization the uterine lining would form to prepare the fertilized egg to embed onto it. Now this is a very critical step. In this critical step, step number one, after fertilization within a week, usually five to six days, the blastocyst enters the uterus and two more days to implant. Now that would only happen after the zoonia pellucida, that's the outside layer of the egg. It's gone, okay? And then that would have for uh, many of the miscarriage uh, came from the fact that uh, the zoonia pellucida could not be removed and then the, uh, the fertilized egg could not be implanted onto the uterus. Second step, we have this uh, progesterone, actually from the corpus luteum. Remember that after ovulation, the corpus luteum would be regressed. Then at the same time, uh, the progesterone would come out and then initial implementation happen. And there are many different functions uh, together with uh, estrogens to facilitate the embryos to develop on the uterine lining. After that, we have two other hormones. One very important one is known as XCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. It's a family of gonadotropin, and, but it's not from the pituitary gland, it's actually from the chorion, so it's from the outside of the embryo. And then uh, it comes out around one week after fertilization, and it keeps coming. Uh, would be uh, there around a few months, HCG are also induced adhesion molecule, growth factors, and a number of other transcription factors for the baby to develop and spread and grow. And then we have the placenta in the uterine, and then we also have fourth hormone, placental uh, type of soul, okay? This is actually a growth hormone-like uh, hormone similarity to, with uh, growth hormone and prolactin, we need more to growth hormone, and it appears at around 20-40 uh, days, that would be more than one month, to stabilize the baby to develop inside the wall, and then peaks at uh, 34 weeks and sustain. So, so what control uh, baby delivery? The answer is that we don't really exactly know. We may take a look at the uh, hormonal profile in fetal age over the different weeks, 40 weeks, 10, 20, 30, 40 weeks. And then the human HCG level and also LH level, this is uh, HCG level, we come down. And then uh, we have this uh, luteinizing hormone coming out. Okay. Presental lactogen is not shown here, but you can see gradually HCG was drop, and then testosterone will come out here and then drop. Now, this is in a male fetus, okay? So you can see the testosterone also remains, and then the estrogen also will come out, and then certainly drop to give birth, and then testosterone will come out again. So uh, after birth, we need to prepare the baby with milk. So giving birth, uh, regression of the corpus luteum, and so uh, progestin would be uh, gradually gone. The central hormone is the key. We also have other key players, including uh, prostaglandins, including oxytocin. We talk about oxytocin in uh, 
in our third week. And then I'll come back with a video later, relaxing from the ovary, so I'm not going to explain the action of oxytocin. And also from the fetus, there are also other fetal adrenal cortex, there are also other hormones from the fetus to tell, hey, I'm ready to be born, I'm ready to come out. So if you want to take a look at the details of this uh, sequential event, uh, please take a look at this uh, YouTube, which is also linked up at, into the black box size of this course. So I'm not going to repeat this. As I mentioned, uh, when the baby is born or ready to, to be born, we also need to prepare some other things. And the most important thing, of course, is the egg. Uh, I mean, it's uh, milk in the memory gland tissues. We have this uh, left uh, albumin, so we need to produce a lot of protein. Okay, so progesterone will be down, estrogens up. We also have uh, prolactin and also uh, corticoid and also growth hormone. Of course, from growth hormone, we also will see IGFs involved for baby development and also for milk production. So, what about milk production? What do we have in the milk? When uh, milk protein gene expressions, uh, these are also very important enzymes forming uh, glucose and then uh, lactosynthesis. We have uh, lact albumin, we have casein, which is also a major protein. And these are under the control of uh, lactin and uh, corticoids. Okay? We have uh, progesterone being a negative factor. So before we give birth, we have to turn down the progesterone level. And then uh, this casein uh, with cell formation, the casein would form into the milk, and then water drawn in to form the secretory vesicles in the Golgi apparatus. To prepare all this, and then we have the milk products ready, okay? With lactose, casein, and other milk proteins, okay? So don't think that the uh, milk uh, is only just lipid, but there are also proteins that need to be synthesized. And they are controlled by uh, prolactin and glucolicon. So that is the structure of the what we call the uh, lubilo areola growth. You can see those uh, fat tissues and the milk formation and supply of fatty axis and going into these uh, ducts or uh, sinus. So estrogen, progesterone, uh, uh, corticoids are controlling the formation of this. But then uh, lactation stages, we don't need uh, progesterone. For lactation, we need prolactin, corticoid, and placental lactogen. Remember, that's from the placenta. All right, so uh, and then again, oxytocin would control the uh, release of this uh, uh, milk suck the lipos. Okay, so at the end we also like to cover the actions of prolactin. Prolactin under negative control of dopamine. So usually prolactin will come out and then we have uh, dopamine to depress it. Uh, prolactin promotes uh, lactogenesis or milk production. Estrogen increase the prolactin receptor in target tissues. Remember, we discussed this in uh, uh, prolactin actions that different receptors only the long form works well in target tissue, then that's controlled by uh, estrogen. In submammalian species, prolactin also promotes uh, sodium absorption or salt adaptation in fish and also in birds and other animals for migration and give birth or breed and continue into babysitting or what we call parenting. Okay, protecting is also for parenting. And uh, plays a significant role in male reproductive uh, system as well, particularly for testicular growth and facility paternity, uh, or what we call maternity, that's uh, motherhood or parenthood, okay, to make those uh, 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 parents become able to take good care of their offsprings. The final topic we have on uh, is about uh, contraception. So much so we have known about the hormonal regulation of uh, ovulation. So uh, the basic drugs are actually estrogen and progest progestogens. 
They are of course artificially made. We would like to make like for example gastrogen or these artificially made uh, estradiol like chemical, but they are not estradiol. They are what we call something alpha ethanol derivatives of estradiol. So there's a carbon structure, extra carbon structure here. And they would bind to the uh, receptor to inhibit glutenizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Remember the feedback loop. Now you add some extra chemical to inhibit the formation of LH or FX, which are gametotrophins, leading to the failure of ovarian follic follicular development to stop ovulation. Okay. So it's so mainly used uh, by uh, women. Also, there's another drug, more powerful one, known as uh, RU486. It's uh, strong for gastrogen. It's an antagonist, a powerful abortion drug. Remember that we need progesterone to form the uh, uterine lining. So this drug, we have a special structure here. This is a regular structure of progesterone. We have this extra bulky structure here. So it will stop the action of progesterone so that the uh, uterine lining in the uterus could not be formed. Uh, you may, from this, uh, study the uh, binding of progesterone to this, this receptor and it can be blocked by RU486. Okay, this is a normal progesterone structure. This bulky structure, it will stick into the receptor and abolish the function of progesterone so that the uterine could not even hold up the baby. Right? But for this what we call the, uh, uh, after pills. The other procedure when we, we like to do uh, contraception, we may use uh, uh, estrogen for only two weeks and then a few days for progesterone uh, for five days trying to mimic normal ovarian steroid pattern. But the essence is actually from the uh, extra uh, estrogens added so that would inhibit uh, luteinizing hormone or, uh, or follicle stimulating hormone. Of course, when we use a lot of hormone, same thing is true in here, comparing with replacement therapies, cancer risk, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, uh, uterine cancer, etc. Of course, people would think that perhaps we may use some uh, physical barrier like the uh, intrauterine devices, IUDs. People may even add this different drug or progesterone into the IUD. Uh, 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 hopefully, that would be a safer contraceptive uh, method. And in the last few decades, uh, GnRH, remember, we talk about the top priority would be from the hypothalamus so if we could inhibit generalage we could inhibit everything right so there are antagonists you know that could be used okay scientists or uh, drug companies been uh, developing all these uh, chemicals trying to mimic generalage or to use as antagonists okay but uh, they do, do not meet with uh, uh, successful uh, clinical trial. I think another problem is the social issues. Uh, people would like to ask whether well, a man would like to use this kind of drug, okay? So how would you design contraceptive drugs? Uh, name existing drugs and discuss the side effects uh, for the exercise. You may propose potential new drugs, okay? The potential new drugs uh, could be uh, related to uh, forming analogs as a GnRH. So, do you think male are really happy to use, you know, contraceptive drug? You know, these are our scope of endocrinology at all. But perhaps you may think of the huge market and potential market of these are contraceptive drugs and drug company been using a lot. Okay, in the uh, morning after pill, for example, you may 
like to study more about how you fall in state. And for those who are interested in hormone techniques, of course, you may think of uh, the way that we could do a pregnancy test. For those I'm not going to discuss here, I suppose every year there are different students doing hormone techniques by studying this uh, sex hormones related subject matters. Finally, about the roles of anti malarian hormone. This is important to make the malarian duct become regressed uh, to avoid forming the, uh, the uh, 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 female uterine structure in the reproductive tract. But then actually uh, scientists are still studying the low amount of this uh, hormone coming out from the uh, ovaries, okay, and that could affect sexual differentiation and female fertility. There, for example, we know that the primordial uh, 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 gonad would be inhibited by the AMH, and then uh, with that, uh, then uh, perhaps uh, uh, there's nothing to uh, explore. But as a matter of fact, when these uh, ovaries started to develop, ovulation is controlled by follicle stimulating hormone. So the the ovulatory uh, formation that would be forming these eggs prepare for ovulation. But then before that, there are different stages that the AMH would come out. Okay? Uh, for men, we all need the AMH to inhibit the formation of uterine. But in females, actually related to female fertility or infertility. So you know many uh, patients, they go to the uh, clinic and they're complaining of infertility. So usually you either check the sperm count in men or check the female problem or female uh, infertility uh, and, and these days uh, this is uh, for the uh, follicogenesis. Okay, so AMH is also one of the factors that we would like to monitor because all women would have, uh, or women would have uh, uh, fixed lump of eggs, so the lump of eggs, whether they could be uh, matured or become ovulated successfully, perhaps is related to this AMH, and then when they would become uh, more successful, and more hormone would come out, but this is kind of uh, difficult to, to study, and so far there are different views on the use of, uh, of uh, AMH uh, from the follicles, okay, and then the concentration we talk about is quite low, and because AMH would uh, inhibit this uh, FSH formation. So, uh, in other words, if there are high AMH levels, the uh, infertility rate would be high. Okay, so and these are the recent research that are quite hot in this area for gynecology, okay? With that, I think I'll stop here and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.